Mm -hmm. The books there were half mine, half Rachel's. Hey, now that I look more closely, it looked like the man in that house had some of the same books as I did. My wife's Rachel's suitcase was sitting on the bed. It was closed, but I had a feeling what was in it. Did I open it? Yeah, you did. Inside Rachel's suitcase were a few days worth of clothes, some personal effects, and a train ticket. As I stared at the ticket, I could feel myself flush with anger and resentment. The date and type matched the receipt I had found. Bum bum bum. So she was probably gonna run away with Norman. Unlock the basement door. Clump, clump, clump. There were old Christmas decorations in the box. Hmm, okay. The garbage bags were stuffed with old paint cans and supplies. There was a dirty old key here. Did I take the key? Yeah, you did. I took the small key and tried to remember what it unlocked. There were old clothes, tools, and other things we obviously hadn't thrown out yet. I had put up this dividing divider wall last summer so we could create a separate room in the basement. I hadn't finished yet, so the door was stuck and the drywall was poorly installed. I might have been able to break through if I found something heavy enough. Okay, then. Up the stairs. Betcha, yep. Er, wait, it was... yeah. It was on the second floor, wasn't it? Grammy key I'd found in the basement unlocked the door. Of course. It looked like the room had been tossed around. The furniture was a mess. Did somebody break in here? There was an old crowbar on the floor. Did I need to take the crowbar? Yeah, you did. I lifted the heavy crowbar. I appreciated its weight. That is a weird thing to say. Okay, then. Did I break through the wall with the crowbar? Yeah, you did. With a heave, I swung the crowbar at the wall. It smashed a hole large enough to step through. As I stepped through the broken wall, my breath caught in my throat. This was it. Was Rachel down there? Was she okay? She's behind some busted drywall. Probably not. Don't look. A filthy looking pile of rags had been dumped in the corner. The stench of them was awful and made my eyes water. I was terrified to even touch the pile to see what lay within. But I knew I had to. I had come this far. After all this searching, after all unseen, when I looked in the rags, did I finally find my Rachel? Yes, you did, bud. Wrapped within the filthy rags, pale and still, was Rachel. She was covered in fading bruises and what looked like cuts. Her chest was a horrible mess of blood and dirt, and I couldn't bear to look at it. The knife in my boot, the gun in my pocket, were they the tools of her murder? I thought about all I had seen and wondered if any of it could help me figure out who had done this. And when I couldn't stay there any longer, I stepped away on shaking legs and made my way back upstairs. Reluctantly exhausted from my journey, I could no longer resist the urge to close my eyes. Maybe I would use some of Rachel's travel books and find some place to go. It's my wallet with its contents intact. Either I dropped that stuff or somebody else did. Maybe I was sleepwalking again, ooh. Maybe somebody stole it from me. Norman's store, that forest, the water tower. Was I at those places before? Yeah. I didn't see how it could have happened any other way. I must have been the one to lose my wallet and its contents. But what does that mean? This was the old photo of that other man and his wife, I assumed. I found it in that house. I recalled those faded remains I had found deep underneath his house. What had he done there? Well, what did I think? Was that mom? 
man involved in this whole mess somehow. Uh, yeah, probably. Definitely those tunnels, the odd tools in his house, and the remains of his wife. He wasn't innocent, that's for sure. From the few broken pieces that remained of the mirror, I could see my face had grown pale and weak. I couldn't bear to look again. It was like I didn't actually expect a reflection. I felt empty and drained. Let's go in here first. It was the keycard I found in the factory, the one that allowed me to sip through that door. It seemed to me that it was probably Norman's, but if that was true, what was he doing back at the plant? Did I think Norman was going back to the factory? Yeah. Must have been him. He must have been using the old locker room. The laptop had finally run out of power. Okay. Still love the old time charm of the clawfoot back, though it seemed like cold comfort then. The reflection in the grimy glass was only a shadow, a whisper. Okay. My old office safe sat on the floor. It used a digital passcode. Did I try to open it? Yes. And now I remember I looked this up. It was R. Here, I think that was what it was. Hey, I pulled up the small safe and peered inside. There was a photo in there of Rachel and I when we had first moved to town. In it, we were smiling outside the front of the house, which looked like a real mess. We looked happy, though. Odd, I couldn't remember who took that photo. Inside the safe was also an envelope. The front of it read, Do not open until I tell you. I guess this was a good was it, I think that's supposed to be, was as, was as good a time as any to see what was inside. Did I open the envelope and see, and read what was inside? Yes. I tore open the envelope and removed the yellow lined paper inside. On it was a letter, written in a hand that looked familiar. The letter read, I know this whole event has probably been pretty difficult. You can't imagine how hard it's been for me, too. Well, maybe you can. This isn't meant to be an excuse, but, well, I hope you can better understand why I've done what I've done. Moving to this town seemed like such a dream, a quiet place to get established, to live out our lives, and to be together. But you know as well as I do that things quickly changed. Your drinking was one thing, but as you grew more distant, as you retreated into that world of yours, well, it was clear you didn't need me as much. In fact, maybe you never needed me at all, but it took you all this time to realize. In the end, though, you may never forgive me for this. You may never forgive yourself. But this is probably for the best. You'll be healthier for this. I'm just sorry it had to happen this way, Rachel. I should have said that in my lady voice, I guess. I leafed through the notebook I had taken from the forest. In it were the names that had been written down. Heather, Olivia, Ashley, Cheryl, Iris, Daphne, Holly, Rose, Rachel. I recalled the names I saw scratched out on that old desk deep within those musty tunnels. Was that man in that house really up to something? It was the letter I had taken from the post box. Rachel, were you living having were you really having an affair with Norman? But why? I didn't think things were that bad. In, Ra in the letter, Rachel seemed concerned. She almost seemed worried of what Norman might do. Did he did he do that to Rachel? No. Sorry, bud. Norman may have betrayed me, but I didn't think he was capable of that. I hated him. I hated him so much. But I couldn't blame him for what had happened to my wife. No, I'd have no one to get angry at me for stupid things like blinding this TV. Do it, old lamp. The way she mentioned him going into his own little world almost sounds Silent Hill-ish. Seems like I had seen all there was. Maybe I thought I was ready to go back into the basement. Uh, 
the mail still sat there heaped on the floor. How long had Rachel been lying in the basement? I don't know. We'll go to the basement after we go in here. There'll be no more dinners here, no more chit chat over breakfast, at least not for us. Oh, that's so sad. That table's gonna get lonely. Clump, 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 clump. Ah, uh, me in the basement. Ooh, what's this? If I was guilty, I could take this to a warm, safe place and do something about it. Did I pick up the knife? Uh, nah. No, no, there were other means of dealing with this. Let's go, uh, no. No, no, other means, blah, blah. If I wanted to end it, I could do it. I could do it with that gun. Sure. It's like carrying an anvil, but I wouldn't let it go. Not again. Now that I stood there, I realized I couldn't go back into that room again. I had already seen too much. Tub maybe? Or... Rachel loved this part of the house. The quiet in that room unnerved me terribly. I'm not sure where I'm supposed to go. been left running. Huh. Maybe back to his room? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So, nothing there. Thinking about things like that made me sick with grief. Okay. I didn't know what to think. I just wanted to put this whole mesh behind me. Now, what was this room? Ah, right. Office. See the insurance bar? But I had found him dead. Okay. Sat down at the table and stared at the gun in my hand. It didn't seem so heavy this time. If I wanted to, I could use the gun to finally end this. Question was, did I think I deserved it? Did I? Was this my fault? Did I deserve to die? Yes, you do. Living in this town hadn't been easy. The plant had helped in some way to stay grounded. It kept me in line, gave me something to do, and helped me get away from the past. When the factory closed, everything changed. I guess that was when I had started sleepwalking, disappearing for hours at a time. I had MRIs and piles of doctor's reports, but nothing seemed to help, not even drinking. But I swear I tried to give it up, I know it. Sleepwalking never really went away though. But I know Rachel had tried, I know she had tried to be there for me even when everything was falling apart. This night had unearthed terrible truce, but I knew it was the final act of a long-standing horror I had been leaving. Waking up in that house tonight was the final cruelty, I wish I would remain unconscious in that room forever. It was obvious to me that the man I had found in that house had something to do with all this. Could he have killed Rachel? It's hard to seem that there were too many things I had seen to think otherwise. After making out of those tunnels, I thought those sewers might be safer. I was wrong. The security tape I had watched showed someone being attacked by what looked like two people. But who was it that was attacked? I had found the contents of my wallet scattered throughout town. Why the hell had I been out there? Had my sleepwalking gone to some new extreme? The thought that I couldn't account for my whereabouts, but knew I had been to that forest and even Norman's place. Oh, that was terrifying. I didn't know what that meant, but at least I had recovered my things. Hopefully I thought that would cover my tracks, so I wouldn't be blamed for all this. Deep within those woods, though, was where things became truly awful. Finding that notebook only made things worse. Rachel's name had been on that list, so what terrible plot was she part of? 
There was a similar list of names on that desk back in the tunnel. So, what was the connection? It was clear, at least, that Norman had been going back to the old plant. Maybe he was the one who had boarded up that locker room, who had been drinking up there in that secret hiding place. So had he killed that guard then? He must have. Maybe he had was found out, or the guard had caught him on patrol. Damn it, Norman, why? After the factory, I thought I might find some salts if I could just get to Norman's store. But all I had found were more horrors and more questions. Now that I really consider it, that's when I should have seen it coming. Norman, where are you and Rachel off to? It was obvious things were more complicated than I'd ever imagined. How long had you been going behind my back? More importantly, why, Norman? Whoever had killed Rachel had probably gone after you, too. Maybe they knew about what you what you were up to. I would have never known peace. I would never know peace, Norman. But despite your transgressions, a part of me really did hope that you would. When I had marched through the rain towards home, I'd desperately come to the hope that this would end. And I guess in a way it did, but how could I have known how absolutely it, hopeless it all was? I had started to feel as disoriented as when I sleepwalked. To think of it now... I guess I should have known from the terrible silence that greeted me when I first stepped into our house and stood there in the kitchen. There was no sound of television, radio, even the air was still. But, but seeing Rachel there, lying ruined and discarded in the basement. That was a horror I could never have imagined. I didn't know if I'd ever find the answers I craved, but I knew that somehow that other man I had found was responsible for this. If not directly, he must have had a hand in Rachel's death. So what was I doing in that downed house of his? Had I found out? Had I killed him? My damn condition made it difficult to know. Memories and time frames were always a mess, and I could never be sure. Knowing that man was dead, though, was cold comfort. My wife was gone, and no matter what had happened to me now, I was lost forever. I checked the gun again. It still had a few bullets left. I felt surprisingly calm as I sat there with it. I could feel its weight, and perhaps it was that sense, that presence, that allowed me to understand what had to be. Rachel was dead, and there was nothing I could do about it. Happy times! So, yep. That was home! And it doesn't always end with you shooting yourself. First time I played, I just... I left the gun where you first pick it up. I picked up the knife. And then I just kind of left the house. Don't know what happened to the dude after then, but... Apparently also, if you want, you can take the knife and go to the tub and switch your wrist in the tub. Yeah. So... Also, I love this. Home is dedicated to my wife, Nancy. Watch your back, Nancy. I might kill you and put you in the basement behind a hastily constructed wall. Press space to share your story. Home is now available on iOS. Press C to go to the App Store. Press X space. Hey, press X space. I don't know where the X space key is. Anyway, thank you for watching my little playthrough at home. Hopefully it was m mildly amusing to you. And why well, don't you subscribe? Because subscribing is a fun thing to do. If you subscribe, you can have a cookie. It'll have to be your own cookie. You'll have to buy them. Or if you have some at your house, you can go eat one of them. I, I can't buy you a cookie. I don't, I don't, most likely, I don't even know who you are. Who are you anyway? What? What are you? Why are you asking me for cookies? And what? And anyway, yeah, subscribe, cookies, and thanks for watching. And I'll see you the next time I do a video f about games for the internet, cause that'll be good times. Okay, thanks. Bye. If I get. If I gave up now, I would remember what I had seen so far when it all had to... Yes, you, you quit? Because... Why am I still recording? Okay, bye!